What's the deal with the new GoPro app for desktop? Okay, so let's take a look at the GoPro desktop app. If you haven't downloaded it already, you're gonna wanna go to gopro.com and up here at products, come over to software and app. And then you just wanna click down here on the GoPro app desktop right here. And then you can double check your system requirements down here for Mac and Windows. And then just hit download now. So the GoPro app for desktop doesn't replace GoPro Studio. Actually, GoPro Studio is included in your download and you're still going to need GoPro Studio to edit longer videos and to put more, you know, multiple clips together into one really great watchable movie. But what the GoPro app for desktop does is allows you to import and organize your GoPro videos, your clips, your time lapses, your still photos, and things like that. You can import them through this app. You can organize them there. And you can also edit them and save still shots from your videos. And you can also upload directly to Facebook and YouTube. But again, you're still going to need GoPro Studio to edit your clips into longer, fun-to-watch movies. So this is not a replacement for GoPro Studio. This is more like a companion for GoPro Studio. So once you have the GoPro app for desktop installed on your system, you're going to notice that it's just called GoPro. I have GoPro Studio installed already, but here's GoPro. I'm going to double click on that, open that up. So this is the first screen you're going to see when you open up the GoPro app and you can check or uncheck this box to automatically launch GoPro when I connect my camera. Why do they just call it GoPro? You know, if the camera is called a GoPro, then... Why is the app called GoPro? Just call it the GoPro app. So we're gonna just hit continue here and you can create an account or you might have your own account if you've ever logged into gopro.com. So I'm just gonna log in right here. So this is what we see when we log in. So right now I don't have any media or anything in here. I've actually never used it on this particular computer before. So we can either connect our camera to add media and obviously what it means by media is your um, clips from your camera, your video clips, your still images, your time lapses, your bursts, all that stuff. That's your media. So you can either connect your camera to import it or if you already have some on your hard drive, you can just hit add media over here. So it says let's find your GoPro media. What we're going to do is hit add folder and Let's see, I know I have a time lapse here. What I'm gonna do, so we're just adding folders here. We're not actually adding the file. So I'm gonna select this folder because I know I have a time lapse in there and I'm gonna hit open. It's gonna add that to my list there and I'm gonna hit save. So it's going through my folder to see if I have any GoPro files in there and I do I actually have this time lapse. So with the time lapse, even though there's 107 individual photos in there, it just puts them all under this one thumbnail kind of similar to in GoPro Studio. It kind of just creates a clip for you, just one clip. It does that here as well. Now, if I wanted to go and edit this in GoPro Studio, what you're going to have to do is make sure that you close out these boxes because you have some icons over here and they hide them behind those little message boxes. So to edit this in GoPro Studio, you're going to hit open in studio. And then that is going to open GoPro Studio for you. And so here we are in GoPro Studio. It moved that clip, that time lapse clip for me over here where I can now edit it. So let's look for some more media to add. So if I go over here to media, add media, I should say. So I do have a folder here that has a whole bunch of different things and it has still photos, it has videos from my digital SLR camera and it has GoPro videos. So let's add that and see what happens. So it went through my folder and it just added any footage, any media that was from my GoPro. So in theory, if you keep all of your video footage on your hard drive in one folder, let's say in a videos folder, then you could add that folder 
to the GoPro app for desktop and it will just pull all of the GoPro media that you have so that you can organize it here. So over here on the left hand side, we have recently added and then we, if we just click on media, it'll just give us the media and it has it sorted by date. So all of these clips here were taken on January 15th. This one down here was January 13th. So it just keeps everything organized by date, which is nice. Now we also have this uh, place for edits down here. We don't have any edits yet. And if I click create and edit, it's gonna go back to the media side of this. And so what you need to do in order to create an edit in the GoPro desktop app is to um, select one of your clips. Actually, you can double click it and then you're gonna have a preview window where you can watch it. So let's say we just wanted to edit this clip and upload it to Facebook or something. Down here on the left, hand side at the bottom here you have an option to clip to extract your photo or to rotate your media we don't need to rotate the media because we're not upside down and so let's just extract a photo what happens if we do that so it's going to grab that frame and save it as a high resolution photo and then it asks you what what do you want to do with that photo you can put it on facebook or you can add it to youtube i don't know why you would add a still photo to youtube but um you could you would just you can hit no thanks so let's just say i want to take a little snippet of this and upload it directly to facebook if i hit clip it's going to open up another little editing thing here and i can take the blue bars here. I can drag them wherever I want them to go and it's going to, if I do this, it's going to basically just keep anything that is inside of the blue bars here. So if I hit save, then it's going to give me this. I'm going to hit OK. It's a black screen, but we'll see what happens. And just like with a still photo, it gives you the option to just share it right away but we're gonna hit no thanks anyway so we haven't shared anything yet so if we go over to edits this is where your edits that you just made are going to be so here's the still photo that we took and then here's the 28 second clip that we just edited from that longer clip that was I think almost two minutes long so what can we do with these well we can we can add these to GoPro Studio if we want. If we just select both of them there and hit open in GoPro Studio. Or from this edits area, we can share them right here by clicking share. I have one selected. This is just a still photo. If I say share to Facebook, then you're just gonna wanna log into Facebook here and we'll see what it does. Continue as Meredith, yes. All right, so we can say, we can give it a title. Lily and Ava on a cruise. We'll say this is a description. It's asking me for share settings. We're gonna hit only me. We can keep the GoPro tag and let's hit share. So Facebook gave me a little bit of a security um, notification there just to make sure that um, it, it let me know that I someone had logged in to Facebook through the GoPro app and it wanted to know was that me or was that like somebody else? And I just hit that it was me. So we're all good there. And as you can see here, on my Facebook page, you can see that um, that photo was shared. And so it has the description and it has the hashtag there. And indeed it is only a viewable by me. It tells me that it was uploaded with GoPro for desktop. So one of the things I already noticed that's pretty frustrating is that it has gives you these little messages over here. It tells you one file has been shared to Facebook. And when you import media, it tells you, you know, like one clip was imported. But the thing is, there's stuff over here and it's covering it up. There's actually like the main functions of the app over here are completely covered up by the notifications. So that's a little weird and I'm sure GoPro will fix that in future versions of the software. Now, if I wanted to use this photo outside of the GoPro for desktop app, if I right click on it, I can hit show in Finder. Now I am on a Mac. And so what show in Finder means is that it's going to show it to me 
actually like where it is on my hard drive. So here it is in the folder. It's in the same exact folder that those clips came from. I can actually do whatever I want with it. I can move it to a different folder. I can save it so that I can put it on Instagram or anything that I want to do with it. So that's where my still photo went when I saved that still photo. And it's also where the video clip went, that little video clip that I edited as well. That is also in the same folder. So if you need to use anything that you've edited, anything that's in your edits window here of the desktop app, if you need to use that stuff outside of the app and outside of GoPro Studio, then just look in the original folder of where those clips came from. So overall, the GoPro app for desktop is kind of cool. I don't think it's necessary to bundle GoPro Studio with this app. I just did just doesn't seem necessary to me because they're completely separate apps. And I don't think that this desktop um, app here, it's not super intuitive in terms of going to the next step of editing in GoPro Studio. It doesn't really give you any indication that that's possible unless you just happen to know that you can hit that button and open up an entire editing program. So that's a little weird for me. I feel like you would have to know that GoPro Studio exists before downloading this app, but you wouldn't necessarily know that it exists because it's all bundled together. So I think there are some kinks to work out and I am positive that GoPro will be working those out. I can't wait to see future updates. Now, if you're new to GoPro Studio or to video editing in general, hop onto my email list. Just go to vidpromom.com, jump onto my email list because I have some freebies that are specifically designed for GoPro users and GoPro Studio users. Thanks. Bye.